Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills here with a mesh install for the 2019 and newer Ram 1500. I'll show you how to make the grill shown here, and it all starts by removing the factory grill from the truck. Linked above is a video showing the grill removal process. And with the grill removed, let's flip this around to start the disassembly. A couple of flathead screwdrivers can get the job done. These will be used for prying open the fasteners that are holding the black plastic portion of the grill to the painted or chrome portion. Once a little bit of progress has been made, sticking a screwdriver between the two layers will help preserve that progress while continuing to the next fastener. I started my disassembly on the lower edge and then worked my way around to the sides. These middle inner spots are a little tricky to get a good angle on and some different sized screwdrivers might work better depending on what you have available. Lastly, I did the upper edge, and with all the fasteners undone, the front part of the grill can be lifted off and set off to the side for now. Next up, it's time to cut out the main center section of this black plastic part. To do so, I'll grab an open-ended saw blade like this one. These cuts don't necessarily need to be perfect, but it's important not to cut too much out. The reason I'm cutting this part out is to get a better angle of approach for when it comes time to use a Dremel in this area. It's not really important to get a cut super close to the edge right now, but it is important to get the bulk of the center out. The corners might take a slightly different angle of approach to get the saw in position properly. With the blade that I'm using, I was barely able to get it in there, and a larger one might be a little trickier to use. And when it comes around to the area near the RAM logo, then something like a downward or upward cut works better. Of course, holding the grill vertically for that part will also help some too. After that, then trace around the rest of the inner part and work your way back out to the outer edge like so. Lastly, knock out the top edge and the bulk of the grill should be loose now. Double check to make sure there's no remaining connectors and if all the proper cuts have been made, then the center section should lift out like so and can be thrown away. Here's the part that remains and I plan to cut about a eighth to a quarter inch past the lip that folds back towards the engine bay. To do that cutting, I'll grab my Dremel and equip it with their number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. A steady hand is important here because I don't want to cut too deep or leave too much plastic. This needs to be a fairly precise cut, so attention to detail is important while doing this mod. The top edge is pretty straightforward, but as I work around to the inner part, the attention to detail ramps up a little bit. While the top and bottom edges can have a little bit of play in the cut, the inner edges have very little room for error. There needs to be a little bit of plastic left to hold the mesh in place, but not too much so that it would be showing when snapped back in with the other half of the grill. The corners take a couple angles of approach to get rounded out correctly, and then it's off to the lower edge. Of all of the edges, I found this is the easiest one to deal with because it needs the least amount of accuracy. With all the cuts made, I'll give the two pieces a quick test fit and look to see how close my cuts were to being where they need to be. This appears to be about right with having the black plastic slightly receded back from the painted or chrome edge. Here's a closer view so that you can see exactly where the upper and side edges were cut. This is a good set of cuts, but there's a little bit more refinement needed before we're all done, so I'll separate the pieces and get back to work. On the inner edges, there's some small splines that can be seen here which will interfere with the mesh going in flush. A simple push of the top of the shaping wheel through these areas will take care of them. Just be sure not to cut through anything else during this step. Depending on the cut previously made on the upper edge, there might also be a protruding spline here too. If you spot any, then feel free to grind those down as well like what I'm showing here. On the painted or chrome front part of the grill, some plastic injection points might be sticking out a fair bit. Just like a second ago, I'll use the top of the shaping wheel to grind these down smooth, but don't cut into the grill itself at this point. There can be quite a few of these spots around the grill. Some might be sticking up more than others, and it's possible that none would be sticking up at all. So in short, if you have any of them sticking up, just shave them down real quick. Also, it's important that if when it comes time to snap the mesh in place that the fasteners are not connecting properly, then additional material may need to be shaved off. 
for this specific install shown in this video, I needed to shave off about a 32nd of an inch so that the frame would properly secure together with the mesh in there. What I ended up doing was carefully removing just a super fine layer of material from both the black plastic and the painted part. The top of the shaping wheel can make quick work of this, but sandpaper can also do the trick if you're not familiar with using the Dremel in that way. For me, I didn't need to modify anything on the lower edge. It was all on the inner portions and the top edge, but I suspect there will be some variance from grill to grill. Okay, now I'm ready for the install of the mesh, and let's take a quick look at the pre-cut mesh piece that we have available for sale on our website. This is pre-cut specifically for the 2019 and newer Ram 1500 with all the right cuts made in all the right spots. Also, it's made from aluminum, so there's no worries about rust, and the finish is a gloss black powder coat. To install the mesh, place the painted or chrome front part of the grill face down like so. Then the mesh should lay on the back of the grill, and please be sure to have the mesh facing correctly, because there is a slightly different tab orientation from side to side on the top edge. Next, place the black plastic part on the back and make sure that it's lined up properly, allowing the mesh to butt up into it. I started refastening the connectors on the lower edge first, and these should go in with no problem at all. Then I worked the top edge next, and lastly went for the inner portion. If your pieces are not fully fastened, as seen here, then stop and look at the areas that might not be making a good connection. Odds are that you'll need to sand down the painted or chrome front part just a little bit. With everything at the right depth, the two grill pieces should snap together with a firm grip. The mesh is sandwiched between these two sections for a very tight pinch fit. Okay, well, this install is now completed. Let's flip it around and see how it turned out. Oh wow, this looks great! It's a seamless blend of the mesh into the grill, and I love this badgeless design. Though of course, if you wanted to add a custom emblem or custom lettering, then we now have a blank slate to work with. Here's a few installed pictures of how this modification looks on the truck. It's a simple and elegant mod that transforms the look of the front end. And it's great that this can be done with simple tools and makes for a good weekend project. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope you liked it, and if you have any questions, then feel free to ask me, and thanks for watching.